Well, that's an interesting uh, point about the messiness of sleep. So most people seem to up perform the best when they have like a regular sleep schedule. I perhaps am the same, but I don't know that. And I tend to believe that you can also perform relatively optimally with chaos of sleep, of uh, a, like a, a weird soup of like power naps and all-nighters and all of that, as long as you're like happy, <laughs> mm -hmm. doing what you love. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can um, tell me what you think about this. So I, I tend to, for myself, try to minimize stress in life. So what I found for myself with diet, with sleep, is that if I obsess about it being perfect, then I'll actually stress quite a bit when it's not. Like I'll feel shitty uh, when I don't get enough sleep because I know I should be getting more sleep as opposed to the actual physiological effects of not getting enough sleep. I find if I just accept whatever the hell happens, happens and smile and just you know take it all in like david goggins style like if it sucks it's even better or uh, what is it jocko is like good or whatever he says right what's <laughs> i think there are uh, several things that you said that are important but i i agree that one can have a dysregulated sleep schedule and still be a happy person and productive i mean much of my life i've pulled all-nighters and slept weird schedules you know i think many people can probably relate to going to sleep, waking up four hours later, being up for an hour or two on your computer, then going back to sleep and getting amazing sleep the next day functioning. Yeah. I think we've, I think it's important that people have highlighted the importance of sleep and getting enough rest. I do think it's gone too far. And now I'm editorializing a little bit, but I think that we've created this anxiety about sleep that it's good. If we don't sleep enough, we're going to get dementia. If we don't get sleep, then uh, you know, the reproductive axis is going to, you know, completely crash. Um, you know, there's a lot of evidence to the contrary. And as well, just based on personal experience and based on the fact that, sure, that it may be that a solid eight hours with no in, uh, interruptions in there or nine or 10 could do great benefit, but you can do really well if you do what you say, which is you wake up, you don't want to start stressing about it, creating this meta stress about sleep, being happy is actually one of the most powerful things that you can do, not allowing yourself to go down that rabbit hole of stress for the following reason. A lot of our fatigue is not due just to the buildup of adenosine or time of day, the circadian thing we were talking about earlier. An additional factor is that effort is in, related to the release of epinephrine, of adrenaline in our brain and body. At some point, those levels get so high that we, get stressed mentally, we get stressed physically, and we want to give up. There are good data published in Cell showing that that signal, the epinephrine signal, is eventually accumulates and there's a, a quit point. Dopamine, the molecule of pursuit and reward and feeling good, resets our ability to be in effort. In fact, a lot of people don't know this, but dopamine is actually what ep epinephrine is made from. If you look at the biochemical cascade, it starts with tyrosine, which is rich in red, found in red meats and things of that sort. And tyrosine is eventually converted through things like L-dopa into dopamine. Dopamine is made into epinephrine. So, I mean, this sounds kind of new agey, but happiness, joy, and pleasure in what you're doing creates a chemical milieu that provides more of the chemicals that allow for effort. <laughs> and there's nothing new agey about that. It's in every biochemistry textbook. Yeah. It's in every decent neuroscience textbook. They just don't talk about the happiness part. They just talk about the dopamine part. So I think that limiting your stress and at least recognizing, okay, if you're pulling an all-nighter or you're somehow on messed up sleep, that there is going to be a point in that 24-hour cycle where your brain is not trustworthy, where your mental state is not worth placing too much weight on because you are near that temperature minimum and near that temperature minimum which is correlates to that two hour about two hours before you would normally wake up the brain is is hobbling along and anything you feel or think at that time should not be given too much value 
But if you can trick yourself into thinking that's the pleasure point, you afford yourself a huge advantage. There's a study done by a colleague of mine at Stanford that showed that positive anticipation about the next day events actually is a powerful metric for creating quality sleep, even if the sleep is very reduced. Hmm. And and you'll love this one. And I, I a lot of people are gonna, you know, might be critical of this. So I just wanna make sure that, so this was work done out of Harvard Medical. It was um, uh, Bob Stickgold's lab and Emily Hoagland did this study that showed looking at OCHEM, performance on OCHEM scores. Okay, so organic chemistry at Harvard's pretty tough subject, yeah. highly motivated. A number of very good control groups in this study. What she showed was that consistency of total sleep duration was far more important for performance on these exams than total sleep duration itself. Mm. So it's not that just getting more sleep allows you to perform better. Consistently getting about the same amount of sleep is more, is better for performance, at least in on OCHEM, yeah. than just getting more. 